Hi, VC. Um, I'm making another video quickly because for 2018, I really wanted to actually start uh, making Vinyl Finds videos regularly. And I'm about to go on a record buying hiatus uh, because I have to pay for school and everything like that. So I've got a pretty good uh, stack of records from the last uh, month or two that I just wanted to... I wanted to get out and show because I don't like posting a lot in the group, so I'm just going to run through these. Uh, first of all, these two uh, very similar albums, they were actually both gifts. Uh, this was a gift from uh, a good friend. Um, this is Mary Halverson's Code Girl. This was probably my favorite uh, jazz album of 2018, and it's got... Uh, Ambrose Akin Muzir on it, who also put out a really good album in 2018, and the name of it is Escaping Me. But yeah, this was a Christmas gift. This is a fantastic album. Uh, a lot of vocal detours, and Mary Halverson is always a fantastic guitar player to hear. So yeah, uh, Code Girl, definitely my favorite jazz album of 2018. And keeping in, keeping in with the theme of jazz albums from 2018, this is Nicole Mitchell, uh, Bandorla Awakening. Uh, somehow, around the holiday season, I, I end up with all these Amazon gift cards, and I don't really know what to do with them, so naturally I just sort of constantly go through Amazon for about a month or so until I run it out. And this is one of the things I bought with it, so I'm considering a gift. Um, this was like $16 on Amazon Prime, and I think I heard this when it came out and I wasn't crazy about it. Upon revisiting it, I think this is really, really good. It's definitely got like a experimental big band kind of vibe to it. Very Sun Ra, that's actually a little blurb that it says there on the sleeve, something like that. A long lost Sun Ra album. I wouldn't go that far, but it's got notes of it. Uh, yeah, this is a really, a really good album that I feel like kind of went overlooked uh, in 2018 for jazz. Uh, keeping in with the jazz theme, these are all finds from here on out. This was a complete surprise. <laughs> this is uh, Grover Washington with uh, Mr. Magic. I thought this was going to be like smooth jazz or something, but uh, I'm very active on Rate Your Music, and someone that I follow on there rated this really highly, and I looked at the tags, and I thought, I don't know, but uh, I was in uh, McKay's in Chattanooga, Tennessee, if you know McKay's, great store. I found this for like 95 cents. This album is fantastic. This is like deep, groovy, uh, jazz funk. It, it never really gets, I guess, on the weirder side, but what it, what it does and what it delivers is so good. It's, it's four tracks long, all around eight minutes. There's a long one. The first song is 14 minutes long. Um, Bob James was involved with it. If you know Bob James, that, that's smooth jazz stuff usually but this is fantastic please check this out if you haven't heard it um up next this is a uh, a discogs fine this is an album i've known about for a while that uh seems to get a bit of buzz in online circles for ambient music and drone music and stuff like that this is wooden veil on decorder records this came out in 2009 i believe um and I'm a really big fan of uh, the group Natural Snow Buildings, and I, I kind of saw some comparisons thrown out there, and I, I finally, I know I heard this a while back, but I found it on Discogs for like three bucks. This is the insert here. And apparently Decorder runs deep with that ambient and drone stuff, so I really need to look more into it. But overall, I think this is a good album. I don't think it's fantastic. Um... It kind of reminds me of the remote viewer era 
coil stuff, a bit of a ritualistic kind of vibe, but it, there's like vocal spots and stuff that don't do a lot for me, but maybe it might do more for other people. I'm definitely keeping this. This is uh, Wooden Veil on Decorder. Up next, uh, I don't... <sighs> I don't really know what to say about this one. This uh, may end up probably being my favorite thing that I found this year. This is Jimmy Lyons uh, with Push Pull on Hat Hut. Now, if you know Hat Hut, it is a European, usually free jazz label. Pretty much most things you see will be in that free improvisation, free jazz realm. And I... First of all, I don't think I've ever seen this thing uh, in the U.S. being sold online. You really only see it coming from Europe. It's always about $100, and the shipping is insane. And so, when I found this in near mint shape all around for 40 bucks, I, I lost my mind. And this album is just fantastic. Jimmy Lyons is has always been one of my favorite uh, saxophone players ever since I discovered um, Cecil Taylor and heard all of the material that Jimmy Lyons was on. But his solo stuff is just fantastic. Uh, Other Afternoons on BYG Actuel is really good. Um, has a lot of Eric Dolphy kind of notes to it where Eric Dolphy was heading before he passed away. Um, and Burnt Offering, he, Jimmy Lyons did a lot of stuff with Andrew Cyril, um, Burnt Offering is another great one, but I think this one is my favorite, this is a 3 LP live album, all killer, all the way through, fantastic, uh, please hunt this one down, I think they just reissued it on CD, it was Jimmy Lyons Push Pull. Up next, this is one I kind of, I took a flyer on it, because again, it, it seems to be a very seminal album in the circles it comes from. This is uh, City of Caterpillar, um, on, on repeater, but this is a repress, so I don't really know what this originally came out on. Um, this is kind of like, it falls in that post-hardcore, um, emo sort of realm, but... It's a lot closer to, I guess, what you would call screamo, like, uh, like Orchid or Page 99, but with way, like, longer, progressive sort of song structures. Um, I, I actually really liked it. I, I think I kind of avoided it just because of that, that genre tag. I mean, for me, when it comes to music in this genre, I either, with emo, it either has to be, like, emo violence, blood splattered crazy, or like poppy, as poppy as Jimmy Eat World. Like, there's no in between. But this actually, this really did scratch that itch. And I found this for like $5, again, at McKay's in Chattanooga. Um, these next ones I think are all McKay's finds, but this is a great album if any of that stuff interests you. Yeah. Titty Caterpillar, self-titled. Uh, next, not much to say about this one, I'm just happy I found it. Uh, this is Tim Buckley, Goodbye and Hello, uh, a 1971 repress there on that Butterfly label. And the reason why I have it in the back of the sleeve is because it's in a god-awful uni pack. Um, if you know folk music, psychedelic folk, uh, I'm sure you know Tim Buckley. But this is, this may be my, my favorite Tim Buckley album. Uh, I've never been over the moon about his crazy Grandpa Tim screaming stuff, but this, this is a really good album. Uh, Tim Buckley, Goodbye and Hello, this was $5 at McKay's. And from that same McKay's trip, this is probably the most I spent on a record then. This was $11? This is the London Muddy Water Sessions. This is one of the two that I have not listened to yet. I know this is a very beloved set of tracks, which is why I picked it up, and I'm really, really excited to, to hear this one. Um, I really, really like the Muddy Waters Folk Singer album, 
And ten dollars for this, I, I couldn't pass it up. It's in pretty good shape all around. There's some splitting on the top, but I'm really, really happy to find this one. That's Muddy Waters London Sessions. The other one from that same trip that I have not listened to yet, but I, I it was two dollars based on the strength of the cover and I mean Nectar. I know Nectar is like a a German crowd rock sort of band. Um, this is on ABC of all things, or at least it's coming in an ABC company sleeve on Passport Records? I don't know. I feel like this is gonna suck. <laughs> I haven't listened to it yet, but it's kind of like the, the sleeve isn't really crazy enough to commit to uh, something wacky, but if it's not, then, then this was a winner. This is a cheapie, I know. Uh, Nectar recycled on passport records i don't know anything about passport up next i i actually got a few records out because unintentionally over time i've just been buying up ev pretty much every tangerine dream record i see and the reason why it reminded me of this is this was this was 50 cents at mckay's it was listed as very scratched it was just dirty um I had to clean it up a little bit, and there's still some snap, crackle, and pop, but I rescued this one for 50 cents. It's just a live album. It's okay. Um, it sounds more like runoff of this album, which is probably a better album. This is Rubicon. And I, I have more Tangerine Dream than I realized, and all of it like under 10 bucks just finding it this is rubicon i've got phaedra this one is kind of rough though this is a dollar bin find i think um uh Aten, this is an original on this is original on or uh zeit this is a italian 73 repress it's like a quad pressing or something and then finally th this I forget, I forget that I even have this. This is a uh, electronic meditation. This is a second pressing on the ore label. And this was, again, I think this was the most expensive one. This was like 10 bucks at a record shop. I think they got a, a Tangerine Dream collection in or something. Because I, I never have luck like that. But since then, I've, I've just sort of been picking them up. I want to say I have one more that I lent to someone. Cyclone or Force Majeure or, or one of those. Um, next, this is uh, another McKay's find. Super happy to have this one. This is Love on Electra. Uh, first stereo pressing. It's on the tan label. I know they repress this like a million times. So don't, uh, don't quote me on that being the exact pressing, but I have every reason to believe it's a first stereo. It's on that Tan Electra label. The vinyl is in okay shape. It sounds kind of assy, but I, I think all of the early love stuff before Forever Changes sounds kind of assy in general. Like it was recorded in a box, but that, that's, it's fine. I have no problem with it. It's a great album. Um, My Little Red Book, uh, Mushroom Clouds are all pretty big winners on this one. That record just does not want to go back in the sleeve. I'll figure that out later. This is raw. Yeah, Love on Electra. Uh, this, this is another... I don't remember where I got this. I got it new though, and it was cheap. This is Burial, Untrue, Seminole, Dubstep, Ambient, Electronic Music. I'm sure anyone who knows anything about electronic music is probably in the know about this. But this is still a very, very good album. First time I heard it was on a cruise ship, of all things. Uh, and I, I really did uh, fall in love with it. I, I had quite a run with this album, so I'm glad I finally got a final copy of it. This is Burial. Untrue on Hyperdub. Uh, and then... These last two... I found these together, actually, at McKay's. Uh, Philip Glass, Glassworks, Stanley Clark, uh, School Days. Um, 
not similar albums, except for the fact that they are both very shimmery and sanitized sounding. Glass works, it works more in its favor. School Days, it does not. Uh, I, I know this one is pretty well loved. Um... I don't know if this one clicks for me like it does for other people, but Glassworks, I've, I feel like I've always loved this album. It's got that writing on the cover there, but this is like $2 or something. But I, I love Glassworks, so I'm happy I picked it up. These are just all very shimmery, shiny albums, and I bought them together, so why not show them together? And then finally, two more that I bought together. One of them, great. I'm happy. I'm over the moon about it. I'm always happy to get some more Rolling Stones in the collection. This is Out of Our Heads. Um, first U.S. Stereo on Decca. Um, Ten bucks. The sleeve is probably about VG. The disc looks really nice, though. Um, always happy to pick up Rolling Stones, but in the same trip... For ten dollars, I got one of the most abysmal things I've ever heard. And the reason why I bought this is because uh, somebody in the VC showed this in a video. They had to have because I recognize it. This is a giant crab comes forth by giant crab. This is terrible. Uh, it's, I, I looked up the tags on Rate Your Music, and it said psychedelic pop and psychedelic rock and sunshine pop. No, this is like, like blood, sweat, and tears. There's horns. There's so many goddamn horns on this album. There's barely any giant crab related content this is not a concept album this it looks so cool this was so disappointing and, and it's on a really it's on a label that usually has good things on it it's on the on the uni label but this is god awful i spent ten dollars on this and i am so angry with myself um yeah not keeping this uh, a giant crab comes forth. And with that, that is everything that I have to show today uh, and probably for a while. But I am going to make a point to actually start making record videos, try and contribute, maybe talk to people and try and pass people some records their way. But yeah, thank you to everyone in the VC for watching and I will try and be back soon. Thanks.